Donc, il y a le droit par le gouvernement britannique que il faut il faut ça en sorte que pour aider que la situation se stabilise dans le monde. Donc, ça, c'est ça. Donc, ça, c'est ça. Donc, ça, c'est ça. Le gouvernement parfois pose en opposition mon propre. Mais pour qu'on change de position, on a, il faut peut-être mobiliser par bah, citoyen, bah, citoyen ordinaire. C'est-à-dire que dans la bah, université, nous expliquer que bah, nous ne pas ça. Nous bah, bah, comme il a cas, bah, député, dans bah, 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 le Parlement, dans bah, le gouvernement. Et sauf que bien nous selon aider pour que la situation de la vision n'a pas Donc les lois sont mais pour l'occasion pour la vision, pour aider les situations de la mais c'est comme si apparemment, je dirais, par réponse, il y a ambassadeur et c'est félicite félici vraiment, ma compagnie. C'est comme si, à ma manière, qu'on peut encore répondre à la question de la question de la question. Et ça, c'est nous ça là. Ce que c'est que le Cambo, il a dit que Madame Oba le dit, ah oui, donc on a voulu lui bouer, on dit mieux. Mais c'est nous ça là. Et on a dit que ça va vraiment nous côté pour changer. Situation, il faut plusieurs fois tous avoir l'opportunité là. Mais et puis, tout ce qui peut être c'est officiel, tous avoir une attitude au qui vous permet de vous exprimer par contre la vie mais sans pour autant qu'elle va se sentir lésée, sans pour autant va se sentir agressée. Mais ceux qui sont là, de créer l'atmosphère et puis ceux qui sont là, tout ça dans la démocratie. Merci beaucoup, vraiment merci beaucoup. Merci. Tout le monde a eu Il y a des 
C'était juste une rencontre avec M. l'ambassadeur Toyo Kiye. Alors on fait par tous les moyens que tout le monde a suivi aux Arandéguenines et à Donc c'est l'essentiel qu'on peut dire actuellement. Mais le reste, pour Pesa Sima, Nabakongolo, Bazalia, nous nous préparons pour le 20 décembre. Vous vous avez communiqué, vous avez ramené sur Rolanda de façon que Toyo Ka, Toyo Bissonio, surtout pour nous, ça peut être Kabila qui devient à Bissonara. Nous pouvons en acquérir pour que Bissonio se merci. Maybe it's really hard for people to express themselves exactly how they feel. 
I want to reinforce what he said. When you go and speak to Theresa May, please report this to her because every Congolese person come December the 19th better be safe than sorry. But every Congolese person is prepared to actually die, including myself. If we were to actually all of us go on that day, we will actually go. Please report it. You know, whatever they have done in their uh, whatever that was, a dialogue or monologue or whatever it was, doesn't concern Congolese people. But every Congolese people, Mr. The Ambassador, please report it, is prepared to die come December the 19th. There is no ambiguity. There is no question about it. My request is, it's not a case of if or will it. It will happen. But my request is, can we ask you guys to protect us? Maybe I won't be there, but when I say us, I am Congolese. The blood, everyone who's dying in Congo, it's me. It's my blood. When I see women raped, we have so much right here. I'm a married woman, okay? I'm sorry, we all grown up here. And my husband doesn't force me to do anything. If he does force me, it's rape. But when I see so many women being raped in Congo, my right here that is so protected by you guys, I just want that to happen. But for that to happen, we know even from Bible, you know, people do die for their lands. And we have hoped to avoid it. We have hoped for you guys to support us. It hasn't happened, but December the 19th, people won't, will be on the street. Make no mistake, it will happen. Give me some time. Can you please protect us when this is going to happen? We need your people to protect us. The second request is actually just something that uh, one of us actually has said. Single-handedly, the UK went to Sierra Leone back, I can't remember the year, to actually, there had been long war in Sierra Leone, single-handedly. You know what, we give you credit for that. You went and, is it deliver? We wouldn't say that because it wasn't Jesus, right? But you saved so many lives. The UK did, single-handedly. Can this really happen in DRC? We only have like two months left. We don't have long to go. Mr. Ambassador, it will happen. Please, whatever you have done in Sierra Leone, could you please, if that is possible, do it in the Congo. Yeah, so, so the last thing I want to ask you is that... <laughs> Can you please say your name? Because that's what you do. My name is Esther. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Prepare to die, uh, j'ai pris bon note, ok? Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I'll make sure everyone fully understands that. And then, you know, many people are saying that to me here tonight. Many people are saying it in, back in Kinshasa. Um, you know, I, I hear it. Um, you know, um, what, are we, what can we do to protect? I mentioned uh, Nonisco. They're not going to be present. They can't police the whole city. They can do a bit more to help to deter violations hopefully the you know the the deterrent effect of eu sanctions will make the person who orders who is thinking about ordering his troops to fire on protesters maybe he will think he or she probably he will think twice about that um and think actually you know what i i would like to travel again to europe for, in the rest of my life you know and maybe that will help um sierra leone was um the Sierra Leonean government invited the UK to come and help it deal with a rebellion. Um, that was what made it legal under international law. Um, I do not think the DRC government is going to ask, make that same request. Therefore, therefore, we, therefore we could. Um, I don't accept that they are greater friends 
um, than, than than the DRC is. Nor do we tell, nor can we tell those countries what to do. You know, they they make their own decisions. Um, what we have done in the past is where we had any evidence that those countries were promoting instability in Eastern DRC, we raised it with them, often with the United States, and I think we had a little bit of success in trying to encourage uh, a different behavior. Um, I think you're right that I think they do benefit from the, uh, the situation in, in the Kivus. We all know, or many of us will know, the statistic that you know, Uganda doesn't, has no gold mines but it, but it exports, you know, a lot of gold. And, you know, and why is that, primarily? Because a lot of my gold is mined in DRC, smuggled across the border, and then formally exported from uh, Uganda to onto the world market. You know, and what is the origin of that? It's the lack of ability of the DRC state to properly control its borders, to properly regulate mines. So. It's in those areas where we are um, looking to help the DRC government con get control, better control of its own resources, so that it is the DRC government that benefits from the revenues that should come from those resources. And you know, other countries can benefit too, but they shouldn't take the lion's share of that. Uh, of that. So, um, what are we doing to promote peace and stability? I think I've talked about that. You know, amongst other things, we're funding the world's largest peacekeeping operation, which I think, I think shows is some indication of our of our commitment. Um, is it enough? No, I don't think it is enough because uh, partly it, it's it's been quite difficult to promote increasing Congolese state presence in various parts of Eastern DRC, um, and and that really is the key. As I said, it's no good dealing with an armed group because. Uh, the next day, they'll be. You can defeat them. They'll be replaced by another armed group if you don't have um, policemen in that village. So, yes, it's difficult. But are we doing a lot? Yes, we are. Okay. So I just want to follow up on that uh, because uh, many of the things that are not known uh, among the things that the UK is doing uh, is a lot of uh, um, publicity around how. Uh, Western nations can actually make corruption less uh, or can decrease corruption in business practices. Uh, the UK is, uh, has already built its own law around how, uh, for instance, businesses can uh, stop um, corruption in, in their practices. Is there anything that you can say about that that uh, you understand? Yes, yeah, certainly. So, um we are on, on, on corruption. We're, we're trying to make it more difficult for, uh, for corruption to happen in the first place. Um, by promoting better transparency in public finances, it makes it harder for people to take money, it makes it harder for people to increase, inflate the cost of uh, procurement of some item, uh, which is a common means of, of corruption. It means that when the money is in the government budget, then it is harder for someone to take it out of there. Um, we rigorously, rigorously enforce um, the Bribery Act, um, which is strong UK legislation which in, uh, obliges British companies not to pay uh, any bribes anywhere in the world and with quite heavy penalties uh, if they do so. Um, and we're looking at other ways that we might penalise um, corrupt uh, individuals um, and institutions. So uh, I think actually we're doing we're doing a, a lot in that area. But you know, as um, you know, various DRC government ministers and officials have said, corruption is an enormous problem in DRC, and you know that's them saying it's not me. You know, and um, I will not pretend that we are making a serious, a big impact into the problem of corruption in DRC because it is too damn big. So, uh, we are at the crucial point in the DRC now. I would simply refer, I've been reading through your speech uh, on the 19th, 90th anniversary of the Queen. I think you did that in, in Congo. Now, this is what, these are your words, uh, Mr. Uh, the Ambassador. You are exactly saying this your comment on the Brexit. You are saying this uh, about Brexit. 
You say in exactly one week, the British people will decide whether to stay in the European Union or leave. My personal view on the question is that everyone has a right to their own personal view. But most importantly, this, this is what follows. It's very interesting to, to, to relate it to the, to the communist situation. And this is the essential point. Ultimately, it is the people who are sovereign. It is they who have the power over the politicians. And it is they who ultimately decide the greatness of their nations. Now, everything we have said here about Mr. Kabila's government, the uh, uh, after the invasion of the Congo, it simply means at this critical point that the government of Mr. Kabila has not delivered the common good that the Congolese people are expecting. One simple indication. I wonder, as a band has said, how do you account for all the millions you're putting into Congo? Yourself, you have said that you don't even trust the government because you don't put the money in their hands. Okay. Uh, what, what is here? We have been here, British citizens, Congolese British citizens. What I see here, you bring the services to where the local people are and it makes an impact. What Congolese people are saying now, the government has failed them in terms of security, in terms of health, in terms of uh, economy and everything. They have failed. We are the provider on the daily living of Congolese people. We have the heavyweight. Now, what they are saying, they don't want this government, that's why there are all these protests. Now, here is a government who is in response killing these common people who are saying enough is enough. Now, uh, what the British government is doing to support the will of these common Congolese who are now saying no, and how are you working with your position who are carrying the will of the population to say no to the current government because they want a change of regime that will bring a change, a new way of life for the Congolese people to account better for their common good on a daily basis. Thank you. What's your position and how are you supporting your position and the will of the Congolese people? Thank you, Robert. Well, firstly, thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased someone read that speech. <laughs> that shows that, that, yeah, that, the time that my colleagues put up, spend in putting it on the internet has not been wasted, so thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. But the, um, I understand, you know, I understand people's frustration, you know. I think my, my own sense is that in the early years after, you know, after the end of the war, people were content with peace, you know, and now they want more and they want, they, they're not content with peace, they want a, a better functioning democracy, they want better development, they want faster, they want the fruits of economic growth to be shared out more widely, they want stronger, you know, civil and political and human rights, you know, they want better access, particularly to education, but so many other things. And I, I know it must be very hard, you know, living in a country where these things are given to people, to see friends and relatives and lots of people you know not having those things. You know, 9% of people having access to electricity, smaller proportion of people having access to, uh, to, to, to running water, you know, th that must be really hard. You know, but, you know, we're not in the regime change business, you know, this is not the 1950s. So it, it's a very, it, it's a different environment. What we have to, what we're, the best that we do, the right thing that we can do is not impose our will, it's not us to decide the fate of the DRC. It, we are promoting holding as soon as reasonably possible presidential elections so that the people can decide who they want to be their leader. And that is the, that is the right thing to do. Um, not, to, not to go out on the streets, in my view. I know people will have their own views on this, but I just feel that that will lead to violent, looting, uncontrollable chaos, you know, maybe there'll even be a, some kind of state of emergency declared after that. You know, I mean, I, these things can go in unpredictable ways, and I, d I don't want that. I, no, sorry, I'll leave it. Okay, so... French, um, I would like to address one question in French, because my people can get better understanding in French back home. The day that we get just to watch this video. Um, 
je vous remercie pour le moment parce que vous dites que vous aidez au Congo avec l'éducation et tout ça. Moi, je suis un peu étonné parce qu'au Congo, en Grèce, on a vie. Excusez-moi peut-être de vous donner cet exemple. Quand il n'y a pas de stabilité politique dans un pays quelconque, l'économie ne va pas. Vous êtes mieux placé d'ailleurs, monsieur l'ambassadeur, pour bien comprendre parce qu'il s'est passé en Grèce, c'est aussi le même. L'avenir maintenant au Congo, c'est-à-dire économiquement parlant, les choses où le Congo va se mettre debout politiquement, l'économie aussi va aller de pair. Mais politiquement parlant, euh, en 2011, on a vu euh, votre approche politique, c'est-à-dire des euh, de, de, de Anglais. Il y a eu une rupture diplomatique en Iran. Est-ce que vous avez vu quelque chose qui ne, qui ne partait pas bien concernant euh, comment l'arme nucléaire Revenons. Euh, vous avez été encore, c'était je pense en 2000 quelque chose, euh, avec l'élection de Hassan en Iran. Et puis il y a eu directement comment votre relation diplomatique a repris. C'est que quelque part, en tant qu'allié, en tant qu'un élément, un pays puissant, vous pouvez aussi influencer quelque chose pour un changement d'un président quelconque comme vous avez fait en Iran. Mais je trouve un peu ambigu, pourquoi pas au Congo Deuxième chose, ce que je ne comprends pas, en Syrie, tout le monde connaît la façon dont vous avez fait peut-être connaître aux gens que le président actuel ne respecte pas les gens, il tue les civils. Mais la même chose en Syrie, c'est au Congo, mais différence, c'est que je ne comprends pas. Pourquoi vous n'avez pas des sanctions Pourquoi vous traitez autrement les civils syriens et vous traitez différemment les civils congolais Parce que vous, de vos intérêts valent mieux que les Congolais qui sont tués au Congo ou vous aimez vraiment beaucoup les Congolais. Alors pour finir, je vous remercie de plus, mais moi je ne suis pas d'une connotation politique. Je suis un civil parmi les civils qui qu'on tue souvent. Mais ce que je vais vous dire, on n'a pas de représentants politiques au moment où nous sommes morts, la bombe. Et que tout le monde ici, nous dépensons beaucoup comme a dit mon frère. C'est nous peut-être qui allons faire nos représentations et votre gouvernement nous aider avec des lobbies pour faire pression Kabila et toute l'opposition corrompue quitte notre pays parce que Kabila représente vos intérêts et vous aimez vos intérêts qui les corrompent. Bon, non, non. Je, je comprends parfaitement ce que vous dites. Mais je, je ne crois pas qu'on peut attendre la, la stabilité politique. Ah, avant, que, que, avant de commencer de travailler sur le développement économique. On peut faire, parce que si, si, si on attend, on peut attendre pour jamais. Donc, il faut faire tous les deux en, en parallèle, mais j'accepte certainement qu'on on ne peut pas partager les, les fruits de la croissance économique parmi toute la population s'il si n'y a pas une... une un système politique qui fonctionne bien pour, pour toute la population. Mais vous avez mentionné le, le cas où euh, les, les Occidentaux, entre guillemets, euh, ont, un, de, ont, ont ingéré de, de manière euh, avec le, le force armée en, en Libye, ce, qui, ce que nous faisons aussi en Syrie en, en ce moment. Mais ce sont des cas tout à fait différents. Euh, la Syrie qui est vraiment en, dans une guerre civile. Ce n'est pas la même chose que, que la RDC. Je accepte parfaitement qu'il y a les, les morts en, en, en RDC. On l'a vu en septembre 19 et 20. Donc, mais on a réagi à ça. Comme j'ai expliqué, l'Union européenne a pris la décision cette semaine, en lundi, de... Euh, de, de initier les, les sanctions contre ceux qui sont responsables pour la, la violence, la répression en RDC. Donc, il y a une réaction à ces, à, contre ceux qui ont commis ces actes de violence. Donc, il y a des, des, des pressions, mais je n'accepte pas que c'est la même chose que les, les, le cas que vous avez évoqué en, en moins environ. Parce que là-bas, en, en Libye, par exemple, il y a une résolution du Conseil de sécurité qui a autorisé l'usage des, des forces armées contre euh, le gouvernement de, euh, pour, proté pour protéger les civils. 
Donc, il faut respecter la loi internationale et on ne peut pas euh, remplacer un gouvernement avec un autre. Ce n'est pas notre droit de, de faire cela. Ce n'est pas notre obligation. So I'm terribly sorry for those who did not uh, get the chance to ask uh, questions. Uh, I can only apologize. Perhaps if Ambassador Zebedi agrees to this, uh, in spite of the grueling questions we yeah. asked you, um, if, if you agree to it, perhaps you can schedule another meeting like this so that we can say to you firsthand uh, what, we, what we really think about the situation. Uh, and I think also it will be a no, an opportunity because many of us here are British uh, citizens. Uh, and I think it's also incumbent on you, as well as it is for the wider uh, British population, to also uh, account to us as citizens about what you're doing on our behalf uh, in, in the DRC. Um, so, but I really thank you very, very much because you have really uh, answered uh, all the, our questions. You have not avoided any of them. Uh, some of them have been really difficult, uh, and you've been a really good sport. <laughs> uh, so we really thank you for that. And uh, we, you know, can we join our hands and uh, thank you? I'll just say one word in final. Thank, firstly, thank you very much to the people who've uh, enabled me to uh, to speak. Um, we will do, I, I assure you that I personally and the UK government generally will do whatever we can uh, to promote peace and prosperity in DRC. Please understand that there are limits to what we can do or should do. Um, financial limits, legal limits, political limits. Um, bear that in mind, please. But within those limits, we'll do, we'll give 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so there is tea and coffee. Very shortly we can have that. Alors on est tous à éviter de se clôturer dans un azaïr TV. Donc nous avons vraiment pas mal à y Et puis surtout Yaki Awa, Yaki pour représenter Sisi UK. Un grand merci, la coordinateur. On a vu son papa qui se quitte tout bas. Nous avons vraiment mon nom à Sisi UK qui est né Bosso. Merci à papa Jean-Marie Azaïr TV. Un grand merci tout mon ami. Bye bye.